it's nitrogen. Do you know if those fields vary with distance? You know, with a tree be getting more, um, yeah. more, more energy because it's higher? Yes. Yeah. It's all different energy. It's all different layers. And that's why some plants are, are lower, some are higher bushes, some are trees, because they will grow to their design to, and create their different structure and magra fields to absorb what they are. Because they using. become a magnet then for the fields that they want. Have you uh, tried using sort of earth like Gansas to grow potatoes in aquaponics? No, I think you couldn't No, but you can't any roots in, in, in our system. Uh, okay, so just like the CO2 box setup, where we created the CO2, the leaves and the plants will create the minerals, the carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, internally by interacting with the fields and the atmosphere. So again, the plants are not absorbing CO2 from the atmosphere into their leaf, as we are told. That leaf is, that is the two plates. So because when you look at a leaf, on the one side it's very shiny, the other side is, is, is quite rough. That shiny side is your nano side. The rough side is your other plate. So that leaf is that combination that we've got one nano plate and one normal plate. And in between we're creating the CO2. So that's what a leaf does. Between the shiny side and the other side, in between it's creating that CO2. So it's not absorbing physical CO2 from the atmosphere. So you know how they say, or they said that, that it was absorbed the CO2 to give out the oxygen, so where does the oxygen come from? The plants give off the oxygen because they create the CO2 within their in the plant structure and that CO2 is used for the energy and create all the other mechanisms within the plant and in using up, because the plant uses a lot of carbon, and so you will use up the carbon and release the oxygen. And when you break it down, a lot of people will say that the carbon-nitrogen ratio is always a big thing. Uh, it's gen, a lot of people will go to 30, uh, one carbon for 30 no, nitrogen. No, th 30 carbon for one nitrogen. Uh, yeah, 30 carbon for one nitrogen. You need very little nitrogen. The plants use very little nitrogen. It's mainly the carbon that they use. So by adding CO2, uh, to your plants and spraying your plants with CO2 water, you're helping the plants because now they don't have to work so hard to absorb those fields because you've already created the field for them to take in and use. Do you think you want this the rough side of the leaf? That's just your other plate. So one side is nano, the other side is normal. All right, so. That's what's happening. Sorry, yeah. So with that CO2 there, yeah. if I took a couple of drops, teaspoons, and put in the watering can, yes. put over a few bit of seed on this. Yes. Good growth. Good stuff. Yeah. And proper sick, sick plant as well, or sick tree? Oh, yeah. uh, yes. Sick, sta really established plants, yes. If they're sick, yes, you'll be able to just restore them. Because they're sick just like humans, because they're unbalanced. So by giving them the CO2, you are able to balance them as well. What I did find though was um, with little seedlings, if you start out with little seedlings and you starve them, and they battle and battle, and then you try and add and feed them up, it doesn't work. They have to have a very, very good start, just like anything else. A good start in life. Because what's happening is you having the interaction between the soil and the interaction between the top of the plant. So you're getting this, everything must come into balance. Okay. You're getting the root structure interacting with your soils, your bacteria, your fungi, everything. Everything's interacting there. Your plant is, your, is interacting with the atmosphere. So there's a lot going on. So there's the interaction. This is what's happening all the time in nature. 
Just looking at that, do you think the, the top section is a plate and the, the roots might be a narrow plate? It's the whole thing, in other words. Yeah, you can start it. It's good, good question, because one has to start looking and, and understanding this technology and applying it into nature and practical sense. So yes, you can start reading this method into everything and the plasma, the way it works, into everything in our everyday life. And you begin to understand how everything works around us. So you've got to take these basic concepts and start thinking how everything else works. And uh, okay, so um, let me just see what experiment this was. Okay, what I did in the beginning, I wanted to see now the effect of all these different ganses that we had made, what it would do to seeds. Because I thought, okay, I uh, see I've got CO2, CH3, there was some almost C gangs, copper oxide, zinc oxide. And I put a little bit of gangs into the bottle and I filled it with water. And then I put test tubes in that contain seeds oh. of about eight different plants. Because <laughs> I wanted to see, okay, now which, what gangs is going to affect to what plant. You know, I was just playing around to see what would happen. Um, the, uh, all the plants were planted in the same system on the same day. I try to keep it all really relative. There was the one trough, all the different plants, different seeds there, we harvested after 63 days. What we found was the seeds exposed to the fields had no effect or changes. Okay. Because the seeds are designed to protect themselves from all fields in the environment until water is added to break this layer. Oh, yeah. See, that's why seeds can sit in the ground for 50 years and then all of a sudden, under the right condition, it will pop up. So that outer layer of that seed is, is like a magrav shielding. So no matter what field I threw at it in terms of all these gases, it didn't change that seed because it was in the dry condition. I had not exposed any of those seeds to the water of the gas. It was just purely the fields. Okay. And there was no change. What is the key to it? Um, now, when you soak, the seeds need to be soaked with gans water to allow the fields to penetrate through that protective layer. So gans water is the key to unlocking the seed potential. Now, if you take those same seeds and you soak them take some CO2 water or sea gains water and you soak those seeds into that water for a couple of hours, an hour, and then you plant that. Because during that time of soaking, um, the water has this field strength which opens up that protective layer of the seed and allows then the water to get in and activate the seed and then allows the fields <coughs> of your ganses that you use place with the water to start affecting your seed. And if you feed it at that stage and grow, it's beautiful. beautiful this is my other one that's ongoing. Um, I tried to decide, because of knowing that the plants just absorb fields, I want to prove it to myself. So I created a whole lot of different buckets. Let's see over here. Of strawberries. So these are just 10 litre buckets. And you can see on some of the buckets there I've put 70% uh, CO2, 20% uh, sea gains, 10% zinc. And I put that in a tube ring. So it wasn't in the water. Um, so there was 10 litres of water and I just put it on a, a big ring with my gains water of those combinations into the bucket and that sits at the bottom. Okay. The bucket next to it, I did exactly the same, but I put 100 ml of that mixture into my 10 litres. So I just took off my plasma water or whatever 
made 100 moles of that, and I added that to, to 10 liters of plain rainwater. And I've been growing strawberries for four months in that water. Which uh, one works better? <laughs> they, they all work well. You see, I made the mistake with my experiment because I didn't quite understand by having them close together. <laughs> <laughs> They're all feeding each other. <laughs> so um, they all get into all the same fields, even though I try to. That row had a different combination to that row to that row, but it doesn't. It was too late because they're all interacting. <laughs> so I have to create them and put them all over the property to try and separate, to not have that field interaction. But when we eat, when we eat those strawberries, even though there is that, that combination, the strawberries taste different. Um, that row had a lot of CH3, and the strawberries are much sweeter. Because it gives you the energy, which is the sugars. Okay. So, there's a lot that will come out of this experiment, but we're growing the strawberries, they're happy. Four months later, I haven't added fertilizer, nothing, just the fields of your Gantz water. Uh, now, this is the one strange thing we got off our strawberries. Who's seen that? A plant grain off a strawberry fruit. Strawberries have all the seeds on the outside. Yeah. Wow. Um, we got in. And we're still keeping this alive, it's still barely alive, because we don't know how to grow with this thing. Um, so it's still barely alive, we'll try and create, we'll try and hope you get a new plant out of it. Because mostly strawberries are all from runners, and there's so many certain varieties, and everybody gets the same runners, and so on and so on. So this is a, a new special one that came up to uh, surprise me. We put it in the ground. And uh, it's, it's still grain, it's still alive. So you put the fruit in the ground? Yeah, yeah, I took the whole fruit and put it in the ground. Yeah. Wow. Um, Can we, could you do onto something here to grow things out of season? Yes. Um, that's part of a lot of people, what experiments need to do is uh, we've grown some tomato plants. Now, right, we've had quite a warm winter. Um, and so we started, I don't have pictures, but we started with uh, small little tomato plants from the beginning of winter and they are now big bushes. Outside in the open? Outside in the open. But the stems of my, I've never seen it before, the stems of my tomato bushes near the growing tip is as thick as this syringe. And it's a cocktail wow. tomato, it's not a big giant beef steak or anything. So, yeah, the whole idea with the CO2, what it does is it, it almost balances the plant so that it can cope with certain conditions. So extreme hot, extreme cold, it enables the plant and supports the plant emotionally and, and physically to grow in different conditions. So you might find that you can start growing plants out of season or you push your seasonal boundaries more or you can start growing plants that are not generally grown in a certain area because you can now feed them with the, the plasma water and they'll be, be happy in that area. So there's a lot of scope for this, playing around with, with agriculture. This is just touching the beginning. 